I remember I would enter like mosques and people don't assume um, I speak Arabic, so they don't assume I understand Arabic. So, you know, women, like it's okay. But you walk in and they'll start talking about you, the way you're dressed, what you look like. Um, and it's always like, oh, you know, she's cute, but she's dark. And I'd hear that. And it's like, you don't realize I understand Arabic and you don't realize like, you know, and I think like receiving that mess, I don't know, receiving that message, um, you know, as a girl who's like turning to, I don't know, it was not nice. <laughs> Yeah, and realizing like that's the way my community, um, the women in my community looked at me. Being Sudanese, so I'm, I consider myself Arabic, I consider myself also black. Um, being Sudanese and speaking Arabic and growing up, it was sort of like in an Arab space, I wasn't Arab. I was the black person. And then in a black space, I was the Arab person. Um, and with kind of like connecting with my, you know, Sudanese family, I wasn't like Sudanese enough. You know, it was just a lot of like judgment from the outside or maybe feelings of inadequacy um, inside as well. I love the school that I graduated from. I think it was a wonderful university. Um, and I think there were great efforts to sort of like try for diversity, but that trying made like, I don't know, I, I found myself in a space where I represented, I was like the token black person, the token Muslim person, and then I wasn't super connected to both of those identities. So I think for me, um, as a black Muslim young person growing up, it was like I was being tugged in a lot of different directions. I, I enter a space and people make a lot of assumptions about my identity and it felt like those identities were coming from the outside and not something that was like ebbing and flowing inside of me or even like outpouring from, from what I felt inside.